Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Bus interview. I am here joined by Mr. Ross Jang, the head of marketing at Fulby Group. Welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> so let's start with an introduction. Could, would you care to introduce yourself and your role at Fulby Global? Okay. Or is it group? <laughs> is it group? Right. Okay. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Ross Jang. I'm the head of marketing for Fulby Group. So uh, before I'm assigned to this role, uh, I'm I was the, the former CEO of the Hobby Canada, mm -hmm. and also I used to work for one of the largest institutional investor called the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. Mm -hmm. um, so I started my career as a, as a developer actually, mm -hmm. and then I moved to the uh, investment industry. But now I'm in blockchain, so you know I'm a true believer <laughs> like in blockchain and Bitcoin. So how did yeah. you come from developing to? Blockchain to marketing. Yeah. So What's the story behind that. Yeah. So, so like the the the, the reason is behind it is you know I, I I understand like the technology you know of the blockchain and also you know from the you know financial and investment perspective I know how important the blockchain is to the overall financial industry. Right. And then. You know, I, I think for for Huobi, you know, as an established brand, mm -hmm. um, it needs to it needs to be better communicate with our customers. Right, right. Right. So, for example, like we we heard like rumors or like we heard, you know, the misinterpretation about Huobi. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, I want to deliver the proper message to our customers, mm -hmm. and then actually that's where I I think I can contribute a lot because you know I. I was working like in Canada uh, for almost ten years, mm -hmm. and I I, I I worked in China before. You know, I got degrees from both China and also Canada. Right. So like I, I can like understand like both sides. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know uh, even though we have our roots in Asia, mm -hmm. but we are a truly global business. So that's why we want to deliver the message properly to the Western audience, mm -hmm. and actually that will be our like strategic focus for the next for a little while. Now, Fulby has been Fulby is a established brand of exchange, like you mentioned. So, how is Fulby doing so far when it comes to the operation behind exchanges? Yeah, so I think uh, like we're we're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the uh, you know in terms of like the products and also the programs that like, we launch, mm -hmm. but I can I can give you a few examples. For example, like our Huobi Global, which is our uh, flagship uh, exchange, mm -hmm. is open to millions of customers in over a hundred countries. Mm -hmm. um, and also we have we offer the margin trading, and we offer the derivative markets. And also, also we have Huobi OTC, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which helps the customers to com to convert the fiat to crypto. Mm -hmm. So right. if you if so if you look at the the landscape of the exchange, I think like Huobi is the only major exchange that offer this one stop trading experience for the users, mm -hmm. right? So the first, you know, uh, users can use Huobi OTC to convert their fiat to, to crypto, right. and then they can use our Huobi Global as a crypto to crypto trading. And if they, do, if they want to do use leverage, and they can go to the margin trading, or if they, they want to trade contracts, then they can go to Huobi derivative markets. It's the whole circle of life, Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Now, along with Huobi Prime, Huobi is actively making efforts to expand its business. So as the head of marketing at Huobi Group, uh, what are you currently focusing on? Yeah, so my focus right now is a Huobi Prime and also the Prime Lite. So because you know Huobi Prime and Prime Lite is one of the most important strategic uh, uh, strategies that we have, like this uh, strategic initiatives that we have this year, mm -hmm. and because you know Huobi Prime is. Um, you know, offers the users a direct way to access the premium tokens, right? Mm -hmm. So Huobi is working with a part of TM to offer the tokens with a discount price, so that you know everyone, basically everyone, can participate like on Huobi Prime. Mm -hmm. So one thing I noticed uh, when it comes to Huobi Prime was that there's like a certain uh, lockup period for Huobi token that you have to keep right. Huobi to hold Huobi token for a certain amount of time right. so that you can buy or take part in the Huobi Prime uh, initiative. So yeah. would you care to elaborate a little bit further on that? Oh sure. Um, so, um, so uh, for the first uh, prime launch, we actually waived mm -hmm. that criteria. Mm -hmm. So there were lots of people like were uh, were were, do, were getting the tokens on Huobi Prime. Right. Um, however, for the second launch, we uh, basically have the have the default like holding rules back. So it, uh, so the default rule is you need to have uh, at least uh, 500 HT. Uh, average daily holding for the 30 days before the launch. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the, you know, it's kind of like the, the balance between, you know, 
everyone can participate and also you know the qualified participants. Right, right, right. Um, so why we have this 500 HT as a holding as a holding criteria is because we found a lot of scammers mm -hmm. that were abusing the rules, right? That's so true, that's true. yeah, so for example, you know they, you know they they can they can hire you know many people and they will, uh, you know those people don't have like any like. A, uh, criteria. If they if they do, if they don't have the holding uh, holding requirements, so like they will hire a lot of people that will actually reduce the real user exactly exactly launch, right, right, exactly. Right, right, right. So that's why you know we found like a 500T is kind of like a sweet spot, mm -hmm. um, you know for for that. But you know we we hear we we listen to the user feedback all the time. And that's why like we're still like improving the rules, mm -hmm. uh, but like the general p principle behind it is we want like uh, we want more people to participate to participate. You know, if we hear like the user feedback, if 500 THT is too more, then like we'll probably adjust the rules in the mm -hmm. future. When it comes to evaluating evaluating projects in Hobby yeah. Prime, what standard do you guys apply? What's the factor that takes in the most weight? Right, so that's a question I got a lot. So first, you know, uh, you know, this project needs to have a solid background. So right. what I mean by background is, you know, uh, the funding team or like the, the executive team needs to have, you know, a, a solid like uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and if you, uh, well, if the founder has like, is a serial entrepreneur, then that would be a plus. Right. And also we require the project team to have firm financial backing. Mm -hmm. So why is that is because uh, you know, it's not Hobby Prime is not IEO. It's not to uh, raise the fund for the project. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's a joint. Well, you can see as a you know a joint marketing platform to uh, to promote the uh, to promote the project on, on Hobby Prime. So mm -hmm. that's why you know we need the project already like finish the, the fundraising. Mm -hmm. right. And the third one is you know um, you know the. It needs to have a progressive business model, which right. means that it needs to like generate the value in the long term. Mm -hmm. It needs to have like a use cases. Mm -hmm. You know, it cannot be the short term speculation, mm -hmm. right? So that's basically all. You know, that's basically the, like the the main factors that we, we look, and we also look at the token economics, and we we also we also look at like the reputations that the team has, mm -hmm. and you know we look at like different um, you know different aspects, and mm -hmm. we use our work, like smart chain model, mm -hmm. like smart chain 2.0 model to give scores to the right. to the project mm -hmm. that you know that's used for the valuation. Now, Fobi is standing at the forefront of crypto ecosystem, especially yeah. when it comes to trading, something that a lot of people are interested in. Now, right. what do you, it, it's a question out of my own curiosity, but yeah. what do you think is the factor that moves the traders most? Is it the news about government regulation? Is it about an institutional movement? What do you think is what do you think people get affected by the most when it comes to their trade activities? Right. Um, so right now, I think the crypto market is still not mature enough. So it's a still like driven by you know by the by the news mm -hmm. and by you know by the market sentiment. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you know we're you know we're we're we're, we're seeing some you know we're see, seeing some evidence that you know the market is getting like more and more efficient. Right. Um, and also. Uh, you know, right now, I think uh, you know the big news for the crypto. You know, that can potentially uh, you know trigger the the trading acti activities. Is you know one is uh, you know the the news from the regulators. If right, they right. you know if they uh, you know if SEC approves uh, the ETF, then I think that will be a big one for the for the overall industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know another one maybe you know the. Uh, the investment by the institutional investors, right, by right. traditional like institutional investors, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, if there's like a new initiatives like a Hobby Prime that mm -hmm. drives the, the uh, you know that drives the market too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So when it comes to institutional investment, uh, you guys must have quite a good insight when it comes to their movements, right? So uh, what do you think they? What do you think that? Right. is stopping them because they are constantly releasing news that they are starting to get into it but they, right. they haven't actually launched any initiative to actually do that so right. what do you think is holding them back so, so i think the first uh, first uh, uh, factor is the compliance right. because like for a large institutional investors you know they're uh, you know they they want uh, this industry like to be compliant, so they are worried about some like the scams or um, you know or the market manipulation, right, right. right? So 
I think that, you know the compliance is an important fact, mm -hmm. and the other is uh, is the liquidity and right, also right, like right. the efficiency of the market, right? So uh, even though like the liquidity is improving right now mm -hmm. among like all the major major exchange like uh, like Huobi, mm -hmm. um, but still you know for for the amount of money that an institutional investor put into this market, that will still like you know it's like a, a it's like a, a throwing like a big rock in a, in a small pond. Mm -hmm. Then that will like cause the ripple effect. Right, right. So right. I think the institutional investors, like in general, want to avoid that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, so with the industry is becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, so we should see you know the improved liquidity, mm -hmm. and we should see the more regulated market environment. So mm -hmm. I think that's a time when the institutional investor can come into play. If the size gets big enough, that's so right. So that there isn't any risk factors when it comes to price manipulations, institutional exactly. is going to move in, right? Exactly. So yeah. exchanges all over the world are currently uh, suffering from constant threat of hacks. Yeah. Here in Korea, we've had quite a few instances where exchanges were hacked. Now, what do you think is causing all these hacks? Um, I think it's just like in general, uh, you know, uh, this is like a profitable industry, right? Right. And it's like a new industry. Uh, you know, like lots of players are in right now, mm -hmm. and you know those are you know, you know I I, I think like in in general like uh, the the hacking is just you know a general problem that we right. should face together as a, as an industry. Mm -hmm. um, so actually, like a hobby, you know, put a lot of effort on the security. Mm -hmm. So we have like a multi signature like a wallet to. Um, and also like the, the separation between the hot wallet and the cold wallet to, mm -hmm. to like to prevent like yeah. those incidents. Mm -hmm. So, um, but like in, in in general, we just think that, you know, this is like an industry that, you know, not, you know, not so many, you know, not not all the all the exchange or not not all the people put security as you know the the, the most important right, right. like priority. I mean, it's new, so it's bound to have some. That's right. Some Problems here and there, right? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. So, yeah. moving a bit to a sensitive topic, Huobi Exchange is constantly brought up when it comes to lost trade allegations. Now, a lot of media portals around the world are suggesting that Huobi or other major exchanges are engaging in lost trades. Would you care to comment on this news that is surrounding Huobi Exchange? Yeah, sure. Um, I think like most of people that you know, I I got that question asked a lot. I, most of people like brought this to me like without providing. The facts, right. and without providing like a, a detailed analysis, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably like a, like saw the news or like saw some like other people talk about it. Right. But you know, my uh, my view on this is, you know, um, you know, Hobi is not doing the wash trading is because you know if you if you doing the analysis on our like trading volume. Uh, the depths of the of the our, our trading pair, mm -hmm. and also the the price spread. Right. Then, if you combine like the, these three things, then we'll see like Huobi is, you know, then we will see like you know Huobi is no different than uh, Binance or like a Coinbase or right. like the, the exchange that people see you know view as you know like a trusted exchange. Right, right, right. Yeah. So actually, you know, I think there was like a report that you know. Um, you know, talk about like the Huobi. You know, is you know they they don't have the concrete evidence that right. prove Huobi is uh, is doing the wash trading. It's mm -hmm. just you know, on the other hand, they it's it's like they cannot they cannot they cannot provide a clear evidence, mm -hmm. right? But they just suspect that people right. that Huobi is doing the wash trading. So absolutely no wash trading, right? Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know we are actually working on uh, you know on a like independent. Uh, right. Research mm -hmm. that we want to, because we, you know, in terms of like liquidity, uh, so people should not just look at the, wa the trading volume. Mm -hmm. That people should look at um, the the depths and also the price spread. Mm -hmm. So actually, we are looking. We're planning to have a comprehensive like report mm -hmm. or comprehensive overview on the liquidity for the exchange to be more transparent. Right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this may be a bit of a sensitive topic or. New topic, but uh, right. Reuters reported that Huobi Japan is being investigated by the Financial Services Agency. So, would you be able to leave a comment on behind how this panned out, or is it something that you cannot do? 
so it's required by the FSA. Uh, we cannot provide further comments on this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So neither it is positive or negative? Yeah, Nothing we cannot is. provide any comments. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. exchanges around the world are slowly looking into the application of blockchain technology itself. One of the most famous exchanges actually implemented or launched their own blockchain system. Right. Now, is Hobi looking to tap into the whole blockchain development ecosystem because you are a developer yourself? Right. Are you guys looking into the application of blockchain technology within the exchange ecosystem? Right. Yeah. So we're definitely like looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, so I. So from our perspective, it's not just a, a technical problem. It's not. You know. It's. It's not only because you know if there's any like a good technology then it will like the, the chain will become successful right. like we look at like different factors for example like the consensus mechanism and also how their like a de developer community and uh, how you know how the you know how the token economics so there are like different things that we look at to build the Huobi chain basically mm -hmm. so we're still at a very early stage um, you know, when it comes down to the Hobby chain, mm -hmm. so we're actively evaluating different technologies mm -hmm. uh, to to see you know which one that w that we can use to build a Hobby chain. But it's definitely on our radar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you are here in Korea, and it's been about one year since the Korean office of Hobby was established. Now, right. how is the business in Korea so far? And as the head of marketing, how do you view the Korean crypto market? Yeah. So it's I think the Hobby Korea is doing really well. So you know, it's a it is one. Well, it is the first like a foreign exchange that we establish, um, uh, like over overseas basically, mm -hmm. and also I think Hobi Korea, you know, like they made it, uh, they made a lot of progress. For example, they opened the Korean won trading pairs mm -hmm. with like BTC Serum and also the HT. You know, I think that's a good news for the K Korean like uh, investors, and uh, constantly like we bring good projects to the Hobi Korea Exchange. Mm -hmm. I think all, overall, like I think they're they're doing really well. Mm -hmm. And from the Hobi Group, like from the marketing of Hobi Group's perspective, we think like uh, South Korea is uh, really really important for us because if you look at you know the crypto and the blockchain industry like all over the world, I think like South Korea is on the, is one of the pioneers. In, in the in the industry, mm -hmm, you know, right. and I know, I know like uh, so, uh, South Koreans are, you know, are you know are are really interested in the cryptocurrency and also the blockchain. So that's mm -hmm. why, then that's why we have separate Hobi Korea Exchange just dedicated to this market. Right, right. So you know like how important it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now finishing up on the interview interview, since you're here in Korea, would you care to leave your last comment to our Korean viewers so that you can maybe a bit express a little bit the direction behind. The marketing uh, marketing division of Hobi Group. Hobi Group. Oh sure. Hani uh, <laughs> uh, Okay, for for our dear uh, Korean users, uh, so I'm really glad to uh, be in in Seoul, and uh, I hope you will support uh, Hobi Global and also Hobi Korea, and uh, we will we would like to listen to your feedback. And uh, you know, I'm. You can follow me on Twitter, Ross underscore Jan, and uh, I would love to hear from you. And uh, you know, South Korea is a is a very important market for us. And hopefully, you know, I will come to you so more often. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for the comment. Thank you so much, also for your okay. time. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Ross Jang, the head of marketing at Full B Group. Thanks for watching.